The Kamchatka Peninsula, located in the far east of Russia, is one of the most volcanically active regions on the planet. This peninsula, which extends for more than 746 miles, 1,200 kilometers, into the Pacific Ocean, houses more than 160 volcanoes, with 30 of them still active. Historically, this region has been the stage for some of the most devastating earthquakes ever recorded, including the famous seismic event of 1952, which reached magnitude 9.0 on the Richter scale. On Thursday afternoon, at 6.58 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, the Earth shook violently again in this remote region of Russia. The United States Geological Survey officially confirmed that a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck the Pacific waters, just 79.5 miles, 128 kilometers, east of the city of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky. The epicenter was located at a depth of only 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers, a characteristic that significantly intensifies the effects of the seismic shock. This powerful tremor not only shook the peninsula's structures, but also triggered a series of emergency alerts that spread rapidly across the Pacific. Russian authorities, led by regional governor Vladimir Solodov, immediately activated all available security protocols. The proximity of the epicenter to inhabited areas and the earthquake's shallow depth created alarming conditions for local residents. What makes this event particularly concerning is its location in the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, a zone of intense seismic activity that circles the entire Pacific Ocean. This region is responsible for approximately 90% of all the world's earthquakes and about 81% of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. The Kamchatka Peninsula sits exactly at the convergence point of several tectonic plates, making it a true natural laboratory of extreme geological phenomena. But this magnitude, 7.8 earthquake, may be just the beginning of something much larger. The seismic waves that propagated through the ocean floor triggered a cascade of events that put not only Russia on alert, but also other Pacific countries. The question echoing in seismic monitoring centers around the world is, what will be the true consequences of this powerful shock in the coming hours? The authorities' response was immediate and coordinated, revealing the gravity of the situation unfolding in the Pacific. Governor Vladimir Solodov wasted no time in declaring a state of maximum alert for the entire eastern coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula. All emergency services were mobilized simultaneously, from rescue teams to seismic monitoring centers, creating a response network covering thousands of square miles. The National Weather Service of the United States, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known worldwide by the acronym NEWAA, officially confirmed the issuance of a tsunami warning for the western Aleutian Islands, Alaska Territory. This decision was based on precise calculations about the propagation of seismic waves through the ocean floor, considering the earthquake's magnitude and its relatively shallow depth. Curiously, no other continental areas of the United States or Canada received similar warnings indicating that projections point to a geographically specific impact. The city of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, with its 180,000 inhabitants, became the epicenter of worldwide attention. Strategically located on the peninsula's southeastern coast, this port city serves as the region's main administrative and economic center. Its buildings, many constructed during the Soviet era without modern seismic standards, face the ultimate test when earthquake waves cross the peninsula's volcanic rocky terrain. Seismology specialists observe with particular interest the sequence of events that followed the main shock. Smaller but still significant aftershocks continued to be recorded by monitoring equipment installed in the region. Each of these aftershocks provides valuable data about local tectonic plate behavior and helps predict possible future developments. The pattern of these aftershocks can indicate whether this was an isolated event or represents only the initial phase of more prolonged seismic activity. However, there is an aspect of this story that awakens even more concern among scientists. The Kamchatka Peninsula is no stranger to large magnitude earthquakes, and its recent history reveals a disturbing pattern that may be related to the current event. Could this magnitude 7.8 earthquake really be an isolated case? Or are there deeper connections with previous seismic events that can predict something even more significant on the horizon? The historical context reveals a disturbing truth about seismic activity on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Just at the end of July this same year, an extraordinary magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake struck exactly the same region, generating tsunami waves that crossed the entire Pacific Ocean. This previous event was classified as the most powerful in the area since the historic earthquake of 1952 establishing an alarming precedent for current seismic activity. 
The consequences of that July earthquake were truly global, reaching shores thousands of miles from the epicenter. Tsunamis struck multiple American states on the west coast, provoked mass evacuations in Japan, affected the Kuril Islands, and generated emergency alerts in various Latin American countries. The energy released by that quake was equivalent to thousands of nuclear bombs, demonstrating the tremendous force of tectonic forces operating beneath this specific Pacific region. Geological data collected over decades reveal that the Kamchatka Peninsula experiences cycles of intense seismic activity, followed by periods of relative calm. These cycles don't follow a rigid temporal pattern, but show consistent geological characteristics that allow scientists to identify periods of greater risk. The temporal proximity between July's mega-earthquake and the current magnitude 7.8 event suggests that local tectonic plates may be undergoing a period of significant structural readjustment. The current earthquake's depth of only 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers, adds a critical dimension to scientific analysis. Shallow earthquakes, like this one, tend to produce more intense surface effects, even when their magnitude is lower than deeper events. This characteristic means that effects felt by the local population may have been disproportionately severe compared to the recorded magnitude. Additionally, shallow earthquakes have a higher probability of generating effective tsunamis, especially when they occur on the ocean floor. The global seismic monitoring system is recording unusual activity patterns extending beyond the immediate epicenter. Seismological stations throughout the Pacific region detected subtle alterations in Earth's background vibrations, suggesting that this earthquake's impact may have broader influences on regional tectonic stability. But what is the true significance of these signals, and what might they be telling us about upcoming developments in this geologically volatile region? The analysis of seismic data reveals that the magnitude 7.8 earthquake in Kamchatka is not just another isolated event, but rather a fundamental piece in a much larger tectonic puzzle. If you want to continue following the developments of this story and learn more about the geological phenomena that affect our daily lives, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell.